Hello and welcome to the final series, or final part of the series, for the Dragonflight Dungeons Season 2. We are in Neltharis. Now, two things to note here. Neltharis is a very quick dungeon, and as a result, has been problematic in terms of getting recording footage. Tanks have been on a mission to see how fast they can complete this, so this really is a crash course. So, mobs that you need to be wary of in this dungeon, starting with kickables. So, Lahar, which we pulled, Overseer Lahar, has Burning Raw. That is something that you can kick. You need one melee kick to lock him down. You then have trainees that are capable of casting an ability called Magma Fist. This is a frontal cone, as you just saw there. And it can be stunned. It's not a traditional kick, so it's in uninterruptible. They also stop the enrage, or you can stop the enrage that they cast at 40% health. Obviously, in a large pull like this, you're not really going to be able to do that. You also have hunters that cast a binding spear. This is a root, so do be wary of that. And you also have phoenixes that just cast ember reach ideally what you want to do is you want to line sight these get them close to you and then just stun them because they will just keep casting ember reach which is a damaging ability it doesn't do too much damage in and of itself but obviously things will get to a point where they are no longer manageable now this brings us to the first boss or one of the first bosses you can do because there are two ways you can do this dungeon but chargath this particular boss in question has four main mechanics. Fiery Focus, which is a tank fixate. Dragon Strike, which is a single target bleed, will affect DPS and healers. You then have Grounding Spear. This is an ability where it will be targeted to one player, as you're about to see. And the aim of the game is you tank the boss to it, rather than away from it, as you saw there. But again, this is a heroic dungeon people are trying to learn. You then have Heated Swings, which is... Sorry, no, you have Magma Wave. Wrong ability, wrong boss. Magma Wave, which is a dodge for Frontal that you saw me dodge at the very start of the fight. Now, seeing as I've briefly discussed Gorek, that will be the next boss we discuss, and also the next boss on our route in this video. You can see there that I'm kicking Mending Clay from the Bone Tenders. That is just a channeled heal. Now, that particular pack is problematic because there are a few of them, and this tank is on a mission, so we're just going to have to run through, make use of Cocoon and Burning Rush to make sure that I just don't rot myself too far. But, as I said, this was the slowest I've done Notharis in trying to do this content for you, so I apologise that it's been rushed. I couldn't quite solo it on my own. So, we get to the top... Tanks pulling these lava bearers and the lava flares. Moving up, you've got the bone splitter with Pierce Marrow. That's just something that a tank needs to be wary of. You've got a couple of dragonborn axes, which are thrown weapons. Throw lava. You've got the frontal cones to be wary of. And you've got flare pit or flame pit being spawned on the ground as well in this bit of a cluster. But... As you can see, the pack itself, when you get it stacked up around this corner, isn't too bad when you have large amounts of AoE. So it'll be interesting to see how this pull is done in Mythic Plus. But the Tame Phoenixes, again, kind of get kited up, making sure that the Bone Tenders are kicked. Mending Clay's about to get kicked there, as you saw. The second one's about to get cast and just channeled through. But you can see that it's kind of a potent heal i say kind of because in heroic you could still see the speed at which his health was regenerating so bone tenders are an emergency kick now iron torch commander we're going to skip this guy he has a considerable amount of health and probably isn't going to ever be worth your time taking due to how much health he has especially when you have rooms like this with around gorek that have quite a lot of relatively simple trash minus frontal cones and some pulls on the ground good positioning from your tank on this and these mobs won't really pose much of a threat the melt that is being cast is a dot effect that you do need to be wary of and obviously in this room you do not want to stand on the grates 
because if you stand on any of the grated areas above magma, you will take burning damage. Essentially, you're grilling yourself as you might grill a steak. Now, Gorek has the four abilities. One that I've already alluded to with my Freudian slip was Heated Swings, which is the Tank Buster and in Knockback. You then have Forge Storms, Forge Storm rather, which is a Dodge Swirl ability. Blazing Hammer, which is a AoE damage ability. And then you have Blazing Aegis, which is a single target damage ability that will focus on your DPS and your healers. So, Gorek gets very, very easy if you can avoid mechanics. There are two that you can avoid quite easily, due to the nature of them being very telegraphed, either in that large red circle that you saw the mage blink out of, or the swirls that you saw targeted around me. If you stay still, you don't get hit by them. If you're in melee and you're targeted, then make sure to either stack on each other or to very quickly clump up afterwards in the safe space on top of the targeted DPS in question, or healer. But all in all, very simple boss fight, especially once you get the hang of it. Now I'm just inspecting our tank, because this tank was going a little bit slower than I was used to, but was still going ham, so I wanted to see kind of what the threshold was. Unfortunately, this part of Neltharis isn't great, because you do have to run back from the second boss to pretty much where you started. Thankfully, there is a shortcut, so we don't have to run back down the stairs. But it means that we do take some unnecessary damage here and drop down. Now, I said at the very start that there are two ways you can do this. You can either treat... Chargath as your first or your second boss. The reason for this is because in this wing, as we're about to go into, brings us to Magma Tusk. Now, these Spine Crushers and or Elementals, in and of themselves, aren't particularly threatening. The Spine Crushers do a AoE slam targeted at the tank, so just make sure you're not stood on the tank. Melee DPS stand behind, and it's the form of Brutal Strike there. You can see that our Monk got slammed and knocked back slightly. But the ore elementals, you do not want to kite anywhere near the Thaumaturges, because you can see there that Magma Conflagration was being cast. This ability laps with the ore elementals and does something nasty. He, so you saw that AoE stun go out there to stop them, and we've kited through to get everything stacked up so we can again mass CC or just AoE everything down to death. So you see the Aura Elementals go down, you've got Magma Conflagration going out there. Again, that was stopped quite quickly. You've got the Plunderers and the Spine Crushers. The Plunderers themselves just throw a fire bomb essentially around the place. Now, Magma Tusk has four abilities. You have Volatile Mutation that does AoE damage and it applies a dot. You then have the Magma Lobs, as you see, the fire spot beside me. Those will fill up the room, so you'll want to bait and switch them. There's the charge, and then the magma waves that you want to avoid. The final ability that does require some forethought and some awareness of is the lava spray, which is a frontal cone. This is something that everyone needs to be wary of because it fixates on a target. If you are the target of Magma Cone, everyone needs to clear away from you, or you need to position yourself so you will not hit anybody else. This is because if you then try and move while targeted by the cone, like say you're trying to get out of it, you will then cause the boss to spin. He will follow you around with the cone. Now these Apex Blaze Wings are a little bit annoying. They have a channeled knockback that will knock you back repeatedly if you're within a certain range called Condescent Tempest, as you're about to see there. It goes off again, channeled, and we just get further knocked back. If you're channeling something like Channel Demon Fire, that's not too problematic, but for melee DPS and for traditional casting, like Chaos Bolts and things like that, it's going to be a ball egg. And just be wary of it, and make sure that you are not knocked back into something like those grates that we discussed earlier at Gorek, because you will essentially cook yourselves over those grates taking unnecessary damage and early on healers are really not going to like you for it they're probably not even going to like you for it when you over gear but that's the nature of things so, so back against the wall if you can and potentially use defensives during the tempests 
Now, for some reason, we pull some unnecessary mobs with the wardens and other things up there. I don't know if it was for a cleave element or not, but it brings us on to Saga, the final boss of Notharis. So you have Dragon's Kiln, which is a frontal, as you can see there, perfectly demonstrated. You then have Molten Gold, which is a debuff thrown onto a target. In my case, it was thrown onto me. And it is just a spot heal debuff that your healer needs to be wary of. You then have Magma Shield. Now, Magma Shield's an interesting one because Magma Shield is a shield that the boss applies to himself and you basically loot the room. You can see that gold pile behind me will give you a magic item of some description and you use that to destroy this shield. I believe the monk or the mage is about to do it for us because I was dealing with aggro. And the final ability is Burning Ember. This is just a ad is spawned and you kill the ad as quickly as you can. But that brings us to the end of Sagara and I will see you all later. Enjoy the start of season two, folks. Ta-da.